There's a ton of online competitive multiplayer shooters out there, but there's none that look like Drawn to Death, now available out on the PS4. But is this game a sketch of a good time, or is this one drawing that should just be erased? Drawn to Death is a very standard multiplayer competitive shooter that has a unique look that ends up making it stand out amongst the crowd. The game features up to four players in an online match with no single player story or campaign other than the single player training mode. You're just jumping into online play and playing against people online. There's ranked, unranked, and friendly matches with the unranked and ranked having a variety of different match types that you could possibly get, whereas the friendly mode, you can select who you play with and select what type of match you end up doing. When you begin a match, you'll select which character you want to play as, as well as their weapon loadout. You can have two guns equipped and switch between them using the triangle button. You can find more guns scattered throughout the maps. And what's cool is you can actually select not only the two weapons you load up with, but also three other weapons that will potentially be scattered on the map. So you can find them and end up equipping them that way. There's also a grenade, as well as every character has two unique moves they can pull off at any point using the circle button. These moves will have to recharge and they can really end up doing a lot of damage or really help you out as well as you have the L1 button for special moves as well, such as going invisible for a period of time or using a hook shot. There's an interesting cast of characters you'll be able to select from with very unique personalities and looks to them. Every character has skins that you will potentially be able to unlock and use them as well. And finding whichever character you like the best as well as which weapons you like the best is one of the fun parts of the game. One thing that was interesting is you can't jump straight into ranked matches. You can only start with unranked or friendly matches. Completing a certain number of unranked matches, you'll unlock ranked and then can do those. Ranked and unranked matches, though, have different match potential lists. For example, you'll have standard deathmatch, team deathmatch in the unranked matches. And then in ranked, you have core team deathmatch and core deathmatch. In these, there's more on the line, where you end up losing points if you die, but you gain double points for kills. Other than that, the other two matches you can potentially be doing, like Organ Donor, where when you kill someone, they drop an organ. You have to then take it to one of the zones in order to drop it off, either ones that move for two points or ones that are stationary for a single point. You can hold as many hearts or organs as you want at a time, but if you die, you drop them all. So someone could easily pick up a whole bunch of them and then instantly put them into one of the zones and score a ton of points that way. There's also Brawl, where it's just a one-on-one -on -one contest between two characters characters and a best of seven kills. So whoever ends up winning each round, the round resets, and then you go at it again until whoever wins four matches. There's a couple of ways to unlock more weapons and the skins in the game. For weapons, you can get keys by completing missions and leveling up, and then use these keys to buy new weapons, and then you can add them to whatever weapon loadouts you want. Every character you play as can have a different weapon loadout, so it's not one default set one, so you may want to use one character with certain weapons and a different character with another, and switch between them freely, and you're able to do that between spawns or between matches. And then there's the unlocking of the skins, which is where I end up having one of my bigger issues with this game. When it comes to the character skins and costumes in the game, while these aren't, of course, necessary, they're all locked behind loot boxes. You can earn some loot box unlocks throughout the course of the game, but of course they're going to try to get you to do microtransactions in order to potentially buy them. I know it's very trendy for online multiplayer competitive shooters to have this nowadays, but it's something that I absolutely hate. If I am playing a free-to-play shooter, it's one thing to have microtransactions, but this game is one that you actually pay for, and then you can also pay more for these microtransactions, just making it a complete turnoff to me. One of my other issues was there just isn't a whole lot of variety when it comes to the different match types. I also don't like you can't just select what kind of match you want to do. I know that there's the ranked and unranked, and you can select from those, and in friendly you can select any, but I don't really like having to be forced to do the organ donor matches or the team deathmatch if I just want to do regular deathmatch. Also, with the limited amount of people per map, only four people in a matchup, this ends up making the fights a bit dull for me. Yes, there's still a lot of strategy and competitiveness that can be had, but if I'm doing team deathmatch, I want at least to have eight people on the map. 
From the technical side of things, though, the game did run smoothly. I didn't run into major glitching, crashing, or slowdown of any sort. And I was able to get into matches usually pretty quickly. A minute, maybe two minutes at most, to be able to join whatever next matchup I was trying to get into. Drawn to Death is available now on the PlayStation 4 for $19.99. It does feature a full trophy list, including a Platinum. Overall, the best aspect of this game, for sure, is the characters and the art style. Being the whole sketchbook kind of look to everything is really cool. It's something that makes it stand out, and there are going to be some people that really dig it, and other ones that end up being turned off by its look. Other than that, though, it's just an average competitive online shooter that we have tons and tons and tons of out there, and it doesn't do anything so groundbreaking that I think it's going to end up standing the test of time, but easily... I could be wrong in that. Also, the addition of the microtransactions was a pretty big turnoff for me. With everything said, I'm going to be giving Drawn to Death a 4 out of 10. But anyway, guys, that's going to wrap up this review. I'd like to thank you for watching, and of course, I hope you enjoyed.